In this video, I'm just going to talk about a couple of reactions of thiols, kind of the major one. And this is important, especially in living systems, because one of the amino acids in protein, cysteine, is a thiol. And so this cysteine molecule, this cysteine amino acid, undergoes these reactions. So let's talk about these reactions that the thiols undergo. So one of the big reactions that thiols undergo are oxidation reactions. So here we have two thiols. I've oriented them so that the um, sulfur hydryl groups underlined here are kind of near each other in this. And let me also point out that the two R groups don't necessarily have to be the same, so I'll mark one R and the other one R prime, as I just did there, uh, indicating that it doesn't really matter what that carbon group is on there. And uh, what's important here is that you have these two thiols that are going to react with each other. And in an oxidation reaction, the hydrogens of the sulfur hydro group are essentially lost, and the two sulfur atoms are connected together by a covalent bond. And so what you end up getting in an oxidation reaction is this. And notice now our new bond that is formed between the two sulfur groups is right there. And so we call this, these are disulfides. So these disulfides are what is formed. The opposite direction can also go. You can take a disulfide and instead of oxidizing it, reduce it. And I'll show that with an H because hydrogens are reducing agents. And when you add hydrogens and you, or you reduce a disulfide, you go back and it breaks that bond between the two sulfur groups and the H's are added back onto the sulfur group so you're back to a regular thiol. And so these are the two major reactions of thiols, oxidation and reduction. So let's do an example of one here. So here's a reaction. Go ahead and see if you can draw the product of this reaction. And then, uh, so pause the video, see if you can find the, get the product, then come on back and we'll chat about it. So of course we have two thiols here. I can tell these are thiols because I see the SH group attached to a, an R group, or in this case, you know, carbon are spe specified as to what the R group is, but it doesn't matter if it's an R group or not, like we did in the previous example where we just used the letter R to signify the carbon chain. We're not going to mess. Notice the, the R's are not really part of the actual reaction. All the reaction is going to happen with this thiol group or this SH group. And so in an oxidation reaction, we're going to lose the two hydrogens of the SH group. We're going to remove this one and this one, and then connect the two structures together by a covalent bond. And so let's see if we can do that. And so there's our product. Notice now we have created a disulfide, and I can tell this is a disulfide because I have this S covalently bonded to S, or sulfur covalently bonded to sulfur. So that's a disulfide. And again, these are common reactions in protein chemistry. When we learn about amino acids and proteins, you'll see disulfides being formed. So in this example, we have just one molecule, but notice it has two thiol groups. It's a dithiol. And so in this molecule, a, the disulfide can still form. This molecule what I've drawn up here is a dithiol, meaning it has two thiol groups, not that the two sulfurs are connected. That's a disulfide bond. This is a dithiol. In the name, you would put dithiol. And so in this molecule, we can still oxidize it to form a disulfide bond. You do nothing different than what we've done in the previous examples. So let's go ahead and uh, draw the product of that. If you want to pause it and do it yourself first, go ahead. So again, in an oxidation reaction with thiols, the H's are going to be removed, the H's that are connected to the sulfur group, and then the two sulfur groups are going to be connected. So let me go ahead and draw the two sulfur groups connected. 
So look at my structure here, and you can see I connected the two sulfurs together, but to get them close enough, we had to twist and turn the molecule. But I want to assure you that I haven't changed the molecule except for connecting those two sulfur atoms. Notice if I number these carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we would call this molecule uh, 1, 6, hexane dithiol would be actually be the name of that molecule, the 1, 6 indicating the two spots where the two thiols are occurring. So this is 1, 6 hexane dithiol. Notice the one carbon has two hydrogens on it here and here and a sulfur. If I number these carbons down here, you'll notice that they have the same thing. The one carbon has a hydrogen, hydrogen, and a sulfur, right? The carbon one's attached to carbon two, and carbon two has two hydrogens, just like it has down here. Carbon three has two hydrogens, same as down here in the, in the product. Carbon four has two hydrogens, just as down here. Carbon five has two hydrogens, just as there. And carbon six has two hydrogens and a sulfur, two hydrogens, and a sulfur. And so the result here is what you see below, sort of a ring structure, right? We have a ring structure, and I can take a marker. I will take a purple marker and show you the ring structure. Notice it is in a ring. And so we have a ring structure there with some hydrogens hanging off of the ring structure. So I haven't changed the molecule, I just changed what it looks like. I changed the shape of it a little bit. I twisted and turned the bonds a bit, but I didn't break any bonds in terms of the hydrogens hanging on those carbons. The only bonds I broke were removing these two hydrogens originally, just as we done before, and then connected the two sulfurs together. Because they were far away in space on my original drawing, I had to bring them a little bit closer together, and I did so as shown below. So these oxidation reactions can occur um, where the sulfur hydro groups are in the same molecule or if they are in different molecules like we saw in the previous example. Of course, if you started with this structure down here and you added a reducing agent, you would get this structure up here. So the opposite direction can also happen if you want to reduce it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this helped you.